We're cooking quinoa. We're gonna start over on the counter and I'll talk you through it. Quinoa is something that I like to have for dinner um, every chance I get. Start with a, a pan, and this pan is unbelievable. It's super heavy and lined with copper. It's such a good pan. I'm going to go over now and fill this pan at the sink with some fresh water. I'm going to put in about this much water. That's about, that's about an inch of water, give or take. Fresh, nice fresh water. I'm going to set this pan on the stove and I'm going to light the flame and it's a nice hot flame and then I'm going to get the sea salt. This here is sea salt and I'm going to put about that much in there. Then I'm going to get ready for the quinoa. This is a bag of quinoa, and quinoa, they say, I don't know for sure that it's true, but they say that it's a grain, the only grain, that's a perfect, complete protein. Now come over here and take a look at how much quinoa I'm putting in this cup. I'm putting in a little less than half a cup, but it's like sand, this quinoa. It's real, real, real tight little grains, and and but it's it's gonna it's gonna puff up. I'll tell you. So I'm gonna try about this much. I'm gonna try just a little bit less. About this much. Do you want to take a look? About this much. This is a one cup thing. Okay, I'm gonna set that right there because we're not gonna put that in yet. And I'm gonna seal up my bag so that this quinoa stays fresh. This is sitting here ready for the water to boil, okay? Then here I'm opening up for later little uh, vegetable bouillon cubes. I'm going to set this right here and prepare it for later. I'm going to open that drawer right here and get a little knife. Oh, here it is. And I'm just gonna uh, bust up this like so, just into little pieces and let it wait there. It'll be happy waiting right here. This water is about to boil. I'm gonna look at the clock. The clock says 734. Okay, now I'm gonna add the quinoa. Here it goes. Right in there it goes with the sea salt and water. And I put the lid on that. Then I'm gonna go over here and get these paper towels. And I'm gonna get a paper towel and fold it for later, because that handle gets so hot you can't believe it. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the refrigerator. And I'm gonna get this fresh bag of organic broccoli. And open that up and get out some, not for now, but later. I'm looking at the clock. 7.35, 17 minutes, 45, 55 minus three is 52. The thing will be done. Eight minutes from now is 35, 43. At 43, we're gonna put this broccoli in there. Since I'm just, just doing it for one, that's the amount of broccoli I'm gonna, I'm gonna use. And this is gonna go back in the refrigerator. Now I'm gonna set the flame down. I forgot to do that. The flame goes way down. So it just can simmer there. And that next step is some bowls, a bowl, for later. 
the bolt goes there and it's going to take a spoon there then this fine crystal wine glass this was given to me by Agnes and Maya from Wuch, Poland. And I'm gonna fill it with some red wine now. Because this is what you do when you're making quinoa. You, to buy some time, you have some wine. Cheers. So this is when normally I'll go sit um, outside. Should I do that? Should I? That's what I normally do. This is, um, just sitting, taking a smoke, um, thinking of all those little quinoas, uh, bubbling away in that, uh, pan. And we're, we're looking at about two minutes more before we'll have the broccoli. I'll tell the story of going from Athens, Greece to um, back up to Paris. But the, this story takes place after leaving the country of Greece, entering into what was then Yugoslavia. And it was night. It was a night when we got on, I think, in Greece. A coal burning engine pulling this train into Yugoslavia. And I'll pick up this story after we enter, enter the broccoli. So here we are, and this is the pan, and that lid's going to be mighty hot. So we open this up. Now take a look at the nice uh, quinoa cookie in there. Cooking away it is, and it goes better with the lid on it, and then in goes the broccoli. But we don't put the, um, we don't put the uh, bouillon in till one minute before the end. So the end is 53, at 52 rows, the, the thing is really close to getting done. So now we, we go back out. Back in time, 1965, in the summer, maybe early in August of 65, the train pulls out of Greece into Yugoslavia at night. And the train went through a barren landscape, but you couldn't see anything. It was so dark. I mean, a moonless night. Barren landscape where we were in Yugoslavia at that point. And suddenly the train slows and stops. And somehow the message went out that we could disembark, go off the train because there was an opportunity to buy some drinks. But there was no station. You come off the metal stairs on the train and go across dust. Dust was blowing. Dust was filling the air. And it was, it was somehow warmly lit from the interior lights of the train were spilling out under this barren, dust-filled uh, landscape. And there, through the dust, we saw a little stand, canvas and wood, some small lamps around it. And as we got closer, we saw bottles, yellow bottles, green bottles. Uh, the bottles were clear, but the fluid inside was green or yellow or red or violet and it was sugar water. It wasn't, you know, chilled. It was just absolutely the temperature of the outdoors. And for uh, the smallest amount of money, you could get 
a bottle of this sugar water. So I gave the man there in this small tent, moths were flipping and flying and like frogs. Frog moths were pulling themselves out of the earth and flying up in front of the stand. Dust was blowing. It was like a, a, a mysterious, strange wind sound. And out came a tiniest little copper coin that I'd gotten somewhere, and I gave it to this man. I gave the man the coin. He gave me a bottle of, I don't know if I got violet sugar water or what. I got this bottle. And in addition, I got a paper, a piece of paper money, four inches by three inches. The most beautiful, intricately designed gold and green and blue, red, a piece of paper money and the bottle for just giving him this small copper coin. Back I went into the train and after a little while, they, we heard that the train was taking on, you know, water at this stop. That's why we stopped. The train starts chucking out everybody back on board with their sugar waters. And we wave goodbye to this dusty little tent and a man with the sugar water. And off we went. And sometime, I don't know how long it took to get to Venice, Italy. But Jack had met this girl on the train. And I don't know what nationality she was, but Jack and this girl, um, they, they became, you know, close friends. And in talking to her, uh, and, and Jack introduced me to her, in talking to her, it turns out she'd never had a Coca-Cola in her life. Coca-Cola wasn't sold in Yugoslavia. And I said, are you kidding me? When we get into Venice, I'm buying you an ice cold Coca-Cola and I want to see you drink it. It's just going to be so incredible because she'd heard about Coca-Cola. So we get to Venice and the train rolls into this station and I go out to get Coca-Colas for Jack, his new girlfriend, and myself. And I go out and there is a stand, a guy at a stand, and there's the Coca-Colas. And I got six Coca-Colas. And I gave this guy this paper money that I'd gotten from that man in the tent. The man looked at it and he started putting uh, coins in my hand. Coins the size of quarters silver coins and I'm looking down and I'm thinking what a miracle this is and he's filling my hand with more coins and more coins to the point where I had to join the first hand with the second hand and he kept filling filling and filling my hands and the second I looked up at him he stopped and I had trouble getting these coins into my pockets so many silver coins but I got them into my pockets, I got the bottles, and I went into the train. And I went and found Jack and his girlfriend. I got one nice and cold, handed it to her. And she took a huge drink and it all shot out her nose. But she loved that Coca-Cola. After she got used to the uh, carbonation, Absolutely loved, you know, the Coca-Cola. What time is it? 7.50. Okay. At 7.52, will you let me know? Yes, sir. Shh! That's the sound the more it made to another nose.
Is it Riles? Alfredo built all these windows by hand. All this metal. 752. Okay, now we're going in and we're going to finish up the process. The lid comes off and in comes the bullion. And around and around and around it goes. And we've burned up all our water. So we're gonna shut this off. And turn that around, get that bullion melted in there. So now we're getting the bouillon going, and you can see in there, we got the broccoli cooked, the quinoa is all swollen up and cooked, and the bouillon is getting mixed in. Okay, now we get the bowl, and using this, we come over to the bowl and we put the quinoa into the bowl. Man, does that look good. Then we go quickly to the sink. Because this is going to stick in there. And we fill that up with some soap water and we go over and we get the pan lid and we get the pan lid and we take that out of there as hot as can be Part of this is liquid Bragg's amino acid. Liquid amino acid. We squirt a little bit of that on there. It tastes like soy sauce. So good. And olive oil. Extra virgin. Put a little of that on there. And there you have it. A fantastic bowl of quinoa, broccoli, vegetable bouillon, sea salt, liquid amino acids, and olive oil. Really a nice, nice thing. We'll take that out now. Good.